So I think a huge misconception when it comes to Kydex inserts is that it's an entire sheath. A lot of people think that the insert actually is a full Kydex sheath, and that simply just is not the case when it comes to me. I did make a sheath one time that was the full Kydex overlapped in leather, and it dawned on me at that point that it added way too much unnecessary weight, and it just made it a little bit more bulky than what it really needed to be. Because, I mean, when it comes to Kydex, all you're really wanting is the functionality. So all the function is right here. In this portion. So having it encased in leather gives it all the beauty of a leather sheath but all the function of your kydex. So anyway I wanted to clear that up when it comes to that insert so stay tuned if you guys want to see a little bit more on this sheath being made check it out. Some of you might be asking right now, why in the world am I showing footage on making this pouch for this stone? And it's simple. It's just because the gentleman that ordered this Kydex insert wants this on the front of a sheath, plain and simple. So when you're making and designing a sheath, the last thing you want to do is design, build a sheath, and then turn around and build an add-on like this go to put it on the sheath and realize oh my god the sheath is too small and have to start over trust me i've been there and done that a hundred times so okay not a hundred times a couple times and then i learned so when you do something like this build this then design your sheath because now you can put this on the design and say okay it's going to fit right here or it's not going to fit because it's going to get into the stitches or it's going to get into the fold or vite or whatever. One of the questions I get asked all the time is how I actually make my templates. And this is something I've never really addressed in the past and it's simply because there's no set way to design a template. There's no set way to make a sheath, there's no set way to design a template, there's no set way of doing any of this stuff. The thing that people need to understand is you have, first and foremost, you have to understand what the material is that you're working with. When you look at a piece of edge tan, understand, okay, is this going to cause me a problem in a certain area? You have to be able to read the leather. If you can't read the leather, then you're going to have problems when you make your sheath or whatever item it is. Again, no set way of doing it. You may dye your leather before you stitch it on one sheath. You may stitch your sheath and then dye, basically steps change. Just like when we talk about survival. Okay, let's think about this for a second. People will say, fire is your number one priority. Shelter is your number one priority. Water is your number one priority. Situation dictates what your number one priority is. And that's the same when it comes to designing these items. So the first thing that I am going to do when designing this. I may walk you guys through this, I may realize that this design isn't going to work and I might trash it and throw it away and start over. That's the reality of the situation. Sometimes I can design these in 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes me an hour. It just depends. But the first thing that I'm going to do is put the Kydex insert on the knife because, well, obvious reasons. Then on my template you do not have to have graph paper. I choose to use graph paper anymore just because it helps me keep everything straight. So I always find a center line, okay? Then this line here is what that line is, is that line is going to be used to tell me where the sheath is going to begin. If 
that makes any sense whatsoever. Now you will see a lot of times, and I, I do this too, where I'll line it up center like this, then roll it over. Well, <clears throat> through trial and error, I've realized that that's not going to actually work 100% because the thickness of paper and the thickness of leather varies. So obviously, I'm going to have to scoot it down roughly the, di or the, the thickness of my leather. So the thickness of my leather is nine or eight, nine ounce leather, which roughly translates to roughly a quarter of an inch thick, give or take. So as what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slide my knife down roughly a quarter of an inch. Now that is going to allow for the thickness of my leather. Now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out my knife. Now I know where my knife is going to sit once I design the sheath. But you can't design a knife around the sheath. You have to design the sheath around the knife. So we've got our starting point of the sheath. We know exactly where it's going to sit. Next thing I'm going to tackle is the welt. So I can see that I have to bring my welt down to the lowest point, which is going to be this here, which shares space with this particular line. Okay, so there is the start of my welt. Now, another thing that this individual has is this particular ferro rod. Okay, so that's going to come into play as well. I want my ferro rod to position in here, and I want it to be flush with the start of my sheath so that way as the individual grabs the handle of the knife they're not grabbing the handle of the ferro rod as well I don't want the handle of the ferro rod to be intrusive upon the knife handle so I can see where my ferro rod loop needs to start based on where this ferro rod is going to be so I can see that my ferro rod loop needs to start right here. I make my ferro rod loops one inch wide. So that right there is where the ferro rod loop is going to stop. Now we need to take into consideration the thickness of the handle as well as the thickness of the kydex. And you can do that a couple different ways. You can eyeball it. I'll stick a ruler up to it and just kind of eyeball it. And I'm looking at a roughly a, at one inch. So what I'm going to do is for my ferro rod loop, <clears throat> starting right here, I'm going to come down one inch. And then I'm just going to make another line and we're going to extend it out past where I know the ferro rod loop is going to be by roughly a quarter of an inch as well. Now I do not need a one inch space the whole way because Obviously, the thickness of my handle and kydex is way thicker than the blade. So instead of one inch, from right here, I'm probably going to go, oh, about five-eighths of an inch. 
sometimes half inch, sometimes five eighths. Like I said, it never is a standard set rule. that in. So now we can see our sheath actually starting to take shape. <clears throat> now is when we need to start incorporating our pouch. So by setting this on here right now roughly I can see that it's going to be big enough. My sheath should be big enough to comfortably put this pouch on here that it's not going to get in the stitching or into the fold or anything like that. So let's keep working with this template. Okay, so now what am I going to do over here? I'm just going to freehand. I mean, everything else at this point, this is kind of like everything that's ink right now, those are the guidelines. I cannot go outside of this or inside of this. I have to stick to this as closely as possible. But I want to be able to alter it as I go. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to kind of freehand how I want the shape to continue, like so. And since I've made this 5 eighths of an inch, I'm going to come right here and I can make a mark at 5 eighths every so many millimeters centimeters whatever and is what that is going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to now freehand that shape now I'm not going to do the whole thing because again I want to set this on here and see if it's going to start getting into the stitching. And I can see that it probably is. So I'm probably going to need to extend the length of the sheath. But by extending the length of the sheath I'm going to get into, off the edge of this paper. Those are the challenges that you have to face when you're doing larger knives. So you can see that building a template, there truly is no set way of doing it. Truly isn't. I wish I could show you guys a set way to design a template, but there's not. It's all about creativity and the way that you yourself tackle it. I'm getting one. There's a guy who's making them. He's making prints. We're going to hang it up in the office in person. I mean, did I, what did I say? Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders? Did I say Bernie Sanders? Damn it. <laughs> They're all crazy to me. They're all interchangeable. I should have said Hillary Clinton. You've achieved another level. I want the next do an uh, abstract watercolor yeah. painting of Jesus what? holding your shoulder. It's not abstract. It's as it happened. To oh, ben. okay, got it. It was actually just Sanders. Sanders. life, not Bernie Sanders. I think They're that we need uh, like a Brian Stan press box next, really, because I feel like the next president, if Putin is the real deal, and that and he is, man, that dude is a G. Like he's scary. You yeah. need to have a guy as president that's willing to get on a horse and joust him to death or something like that <laughs> like you got to have somebody viable up there it can't be these fucking people that are available now for us that's not gonna work well could yeah. you imagine what like if putin and obama had a fight to the death and how embarrassed we would be embarrassing. And that's what i'm saying we need brian stanton how quickly would putin trip obama and have him on his back and just be beating his brain <laughs> yeah i could only imagine yeah. <laughs> Special pens made. The first G. Bush? Yeah, the yes. old dude. Yeah, he was head of CIA. Yeah, yeah. that dude was badass. Dumb he was legit. Yeah, people. yeah he was legit. So who else? George W. No. But you look at him. He had some success.
goes by the China study. By the way, it's been disproved, Bill. It's crazy. Go read into it. Uh, yeah, what's his name? Information, sir. Kevin used to pull the video all the time. I'm like, are you the serious? China study? Yeah. yeah. Like, he would post shit like that. I'm like, you need to read more books. Well, the China study makes some good points about the American diet. The typical American sure. diet is terrible. You but know, it's just but, like all that other stuff. Yeah. It's like conspiracy. It's like there's not true. Like, chemtrails god i love people that really focus on chemtrails it's like come on people i understand that the government has indeed sprayed people and citizens in the past and everything else there's actual evidence to support that i get it but you really think United those companies are really going to explain Yeah, there would be Well, it would be it would be wait, I mean, think about how hard it would be to get all these people to lie about that and say no, 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 it's not happening, but yet you have that many people working for these industries and companies and everything else. It's you know it as well as I do. They the it's just like do your research. The plane passing through the atmosphere is going to cause the chem the contrails. Yes, I'm getting ready to call it chemtrails, and it's a contrail. You know, it's a natural occurrence. I believe in all of them. Well, the the best one is joking, right? All of them. Of course he is. It's there's no way you can know everything. That's part I mean, of I'm, 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 no way. And we know that people have done some TV shit in order to make money. Do what? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, to spray constantly the whole time? Yeah, I can see what you're saying. But at the same token, if you can put... You know, I, I, I get what you're saying. I'm not even going to argue because I, I it's a ridiculous... Yeah, it's a ridiculous it's subject. A it's a ridiculous, matter, ridiculous well, subject. There's I mean, so many more important things in this world to worry about than yeah, freaking contrails. I'm saying the guys that put you on the ground. Do you know what I mean? It's like they knew they had, they had evidence, they had data that they couldn't find it. I'm I'm not much of a conspiracy. Uh, uh, conspiracy. How do you pronounce that? Thank you. I'm not so much that. But if I was, Kim Trails would literally be the last thing. The watching the what? Oh yeah, absolutely. Y'all wanna? I mean, if people wanna worry about something, it's it's. You remember when we were talking about? Hold on, Rogan, gotta pause you. Do you remember when we was talking about um how anybody there's there's laboratories all across the United States that anybody can go in and play with different chemicals and viruses and things like that. You don't even have to have a uh, license to do so. Or was that you that I was talking to about that? Yeah, I think you've mentioned it. But I've never heard of them before. Um, I'll have to... Uh, there's a uh, episode of Rogan Questions Everything where they actually go and they visit these different laboratories and talk to these scientists and stuff. And it's... That is what's scary, man, is people... I can go in there right now and mess with different chemicals, different viruses and things like that, and I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But I can do that. How scary is that? How do you... I mean, I... Well, I guarantee 100% I will screw something up if I did that. Yeah. You know? Now, maybe, yes, there's probably some sort of regulation thing that, that they might have. I don't know. But from what I've heard and gathered, it does not exist. But I can't speak 100% because I just haven't done all of the research. Now, theoretically, everything should actually fit in this once it's actually made out of leather. But before I do make my cut of leather, I'm actually going to take my knife. I'm going to sit it inside this and just kind of fold it over. Be careful. Don't drop the knife. Done that. 
center it up, make sure everything's going to just kind of look in there, see how much space you've got because it's best to cut this a little bit big and then trim the sheath versus the other way around. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to trim this because of the pouch that's going on there. And that's, a, and that's something that everybody, even as a customer, you need to understand. If you want to make a sheath yourself or if you want me to make a sheath for you, if it's a larger knife and you're wanting to put add-ons like pouches, you know, anything like that, you're just going to increase the size of the sheath. Because sometimes, like in this situation, there just wasn't going to be enough room if I was to build a sheath to the size of the knife. So I had to increase it just a little bit. So as a customer, you need to remember that if you're wanting streamline, um, less bulky, so on and so forth, then the less options you put on your sheath, ultimately that's going to be better. But when you add a Kydex insert and you add pouches and things like that, the size of your template is going to increase just so it makes room for everything. Now, was this the easiest and the quickest way to make a template? 100% no. There are people out there that have larger brains than me that can just whip this together. There's better ways. This is the way I do it. Probably won't be the same way I do it in another year because we're constantly learning, constantly changing. It's just the way it is. Now, if you're curious as to what it is that I'm using here, it's just a mixture of beeswax and coconut oil. It, I use a higher ratio of beeswax. A little bit of beeswax goes a long way, folks. Um, and as what this is going to do is it's going to put a nice thick layer on your blade and your metal and your handle and everything so if moisture does get through which it will at some point you will have moisture get through your saran wrap this will protect your blade I've never had a knife stain that I've put a nice thick coat of wax on it and wrapped it I've had knives stain when I was lazy and skipped a step but if you do both of these steps well like I said I personally have never had it fail Certainly doesn't mean it won't. And then if you want to tape up your point, don't ever use blue tape or electrical tape or anything along those lines. Um, scotch tape or packing tape, something that's clear. If you use some sort of uh, tape that has tint to it, if it leaks through, moisture gets in here, you take the risk of staining your blade with that particular chemical and it's, it's not good. 
So I'm going to work this in right here. Now I'm going to try to slip this Kydex insert over this in such a way that I don't pierce and cut the saran wrap. It can be rather difficult. Especially when I'm trying to cater to the camera. So, bye bye. All right, so now we've got our piece of leather all cut out and everything. One of the things that I see a lot of people doing at this point is they wet their leather to such a point that it becomes basically like a chamois, which is great if you're wanting to do extreme wet forming. Um, but at this stage in the game, I don't need to do that. I always tell Luke when we make any kind of project like this that take your time and suggest and tell the leather what you expect of it. So I've dampened this leather and I folded it in half and I've just told, I've suggested to this piece of leather, this is what I'm going to expect from it in the future. I don't expect it right at this moment, but in the future, I expect it to lay over perfectly, just like this. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife that has that's that's protected. We're going to slip it inside, and again, I'm going to suggest to the leather what I want it to do, just by simply moving my hand around here and everything else, and lining it up. I'm not going to make a huge wet forming mark or try to wet form this yet because I still am going to distress my leather and put my logo on and put the pouch on and everything else but at least this is going to tell the leather hey I expect you to do this in the future don't give me no shit and then I can take my stone pouch and I can set it on here and I can see, okay, did I mess up? Did I get this too small? Is this pouch going to fit? And I can see right now that no, the pouch should fit. It should not get into my stitchings when I stitch, you know. You can see that my stitch groover has got a good quarter of an inch gap between my stitch and the pouch so that should be a good spot right here I should I can pull this open I can open this freely and fully and I should be able theoretically to draw that stone um, let me actually get this stone out put it in here no I take that back I don't want to do that because I haven't stitched this down I don't want to pull this loose of the glue um, just by putting this here and opening this up, I can tell right away that this stone is going to pull out of here just fine. Vitor had a testosterone use exemption, okay, for the longest time. And his testosterone, when he was on, was off the charts. They, he was just three times a human. Jack kind of shit. 1475 was the highest number that he tested for, right? During camp. While they're in camp, this is after they take his testosterone away. Okay, they say, oh, you can't use it anymore. He tested 1,200. And why? So if you guys remember, in the beginning of this video, I actually mentioned that there's never a set way to doing sheaths, that some of the processes will change depending on the items that you put on it. Um, as you can see, some of this sheath is actually already dyed whereas the main portion of the sheath has not been and it's simply because the way this thing is going to go together if I do the dye later it's going to look better it's going to keep my leather looking uh, fresh and clean and everything else um, whereas if I was to do it beforehand I'm going to run the risk of splitting this out I'm, I'm just at the risk of ruin, ruining a lot of really nice aspects on this sheath and I think this sheath is actually going to come together really nice. Um, you can see that I'm going to do a quick release um, belt loop for a gentleman. And this is going to, this is something that I've never done. This is also something I've never seen done. Um, so I wanted to try it myself and see how it's going to work. And it's going to be awesome, I think. So this individual is going to be able to quick release this from his belt loop without the worry of mechanical failure with snaps. And he's also going to have a dangler. And yes, of course, the dangler will be quick release as well.